lot of Ravens fans were upset yesterday and they were going crazy because Baltimore Ravens were expected to hire Jerry Rossberg uh, in a game manager position and that had a lot of people questioning like hold up if you're getting ready to hire somebody to be a game manager then what's John Harbaugh doing and a lot of people have been questioning John Harbaugh's role his position uh, and if he should even have either or with the Baltimore Ravens especially after that blunder in the AFC Championship not because the Baltimore Ravens lost the AFC Championship but simply because of the way that they lost the AFC Championship because this is not the first time that the Baltimore Ravens have lost a game in the, the, the biggest game of the season by not staying true to themselves so a lot of people are looking at all eyes on Harbaugh and wondering what he's still doing here why he hasn't been removed from his position and what exactly is his position if they were getting ready to hire somebody to do something that he should be doing and they were all good questions which I understood but now the question is what happened what happened? What happened to Jerry Rossberg? Because we got an update today from Tom Pelissero. He said the Ravens are now not expected to hire their former special teams coordinator, Jerry Rossberg, to a staff position, I'm told. Talks did not end in a deal. And we used to hearing that last sentence uh, during March and free agency. If Ravens, they say, they, oh, we're going to sign somebody. And then the talks fall through. But we're not used to hearing that when it comes to front office positions. So I really wonder, and I know there's going to be some people that say, oh, no, that's crazy. Oh, no, that's impossible. Oh, no, that will never happen. But I really wonder if Baltimore Ravens fans and all the public backlash that they had on display, if that got to the Baltimore Ravens and they nixed it because of that. It could be for a million other reasons, but I wonder if that was a part of it because it is a real possibility it's a real possibility but i guess we'll never know so I, I guess john harbaugh is still going to have to continue to be the game manager and i know a lot of ravens fans right now they are in a place where they just they don't trust the baltimore ravens moving forward uh they don't trust what the baltimore ravens are going to do moving forward they are just waiting for the baltimore ravens to crumble uh moving forward they're not hoping for it but expecting it because just of them, just because of them being repeat offenders in the biggest moments. And I, I can't be mad at them for thinking that. For, I can't be mad at nobody for feeling that way because the same thing, it just keeps on happening over and over, rinse and repeat. So that's why a lot of Ravens fans were hoping for some change. Now, I, I was really trying yesterday. I, I was trying my hardest to be positive about this Jerry Rossberg move. Not that it's a negative move at all. But just thinking about it, what could this do? I know a lot of people brought up the point that this could sort of take away some accountability off of John Harbaugh. Uh, because if the Ravens have another blunder in the biggest moment of a game, then he could just sort of deflect to Jerry Rossberg and be like, oh, well, that was our game manager. That was on him. That wasn't me. Uh, but, w again, we'll never know since, at least for now, he's not getting hired. Uh, but team keep it clean this was another busy day for the baltimore ravens we got to hear from zach Orr for the first time a former baltimore raven got inducted to the hall of fame uh, a nasty stat came out that we just ugh, we got to revisit that afc championship game once again for uh, but we got a lot to talk about before we get into it team keep it clean make sure you subscribe to the channel turn your notifications on and, and leave a like on the video because it goes a super super long way zach Orr. Zach Orr is the Baltimore Ravens' new defensive coordinator, and we are very happy for him that he ended up getting the job. He was the favorite to land the job after the Seahawks hired Mike McDonald to be their head coach, uh, and he was a favorite in Seattle and a favorite with the Baltimore Ravens because Mike McDonald wanted to take him, uh, Baltimore Ravens wanted to keep him, and he wanted to stay. He said that he bleeds purple and that he just really got a lot of extra love for the Baltimore Ravens organization because of how they treated him, especially when he was forced to retire. Uh, and he said it wasn't John Harbaugh. He said it wasn't EDC. It wasn't uh, Ozzie Newsome. Um, it was Steve Bishotti. Steve Bishotti that gave him a call to offer him a job when he was forced to retire. And that's big right there because a head coach could call you. I would expect the head coach to make that call, but it wasn't. The GM, the assistant GM, they could make the – nope. The owner, the owner reached out. That's big. Like, think about that. Think about if you had to – if you were forced to retire from your job because of a, a physical ailment, because of something that happened, and not your manager, <laughs> not 
or your supervisor, but the owner of the company, they reached out to you directly. You know, that's huge right there. So shout out to Steve Bishotti uh, for that because it's obviously made a, a huge, huge, huge difference. Um, and now it, it just paid off for him in a big way because he got hired, put on, and, and now he is the defensive coordinator for the team that he played for. And that's just that's a beautiful thing. So shout out to Zach Orr. Something else that he talked about, um, he said that it's going to be uh, he's going to be coaching from the sideline. He said that he he just needs to be all up in his players' faces. Um, and I get it. Hey, cool. I'm cool with it. If he decided he wanted to coach in the booth, I'd be cool with that. If he wanted to coach on the sideline, I'm cool with that too. Um, I, you can obviously have success in both roles. Uh, we remember Greg Roman. I know Greg Roman. He was under a lot of heat before for coaching in the booth. Uh, especially toward the, the later years because it just felt like there seemed to be a disconnect with him and the players. Um, but then you look at Todd Munkin. Todd Munkin, he coached from the booth. He wasn't out there on the sideline. He was in the booth. And the offense, for the most part, minus that AFC championship game, but the offense, for the most part, they did just fine. Mike McDonald, he was our defensive coordinator for the past two years. He's down there on the field. So it just it, it's all about uh, preference and what you like as a coach. So – Either way, um, he also talked about how he's still picking out his staff, so he still got some work to do with that. Um, but he does – one of the phrases that he used um, that I really appreciated uh, was organized chaos. Now, I think the last time we heard organized chaos, that was uh, Rex Ryan, I believe, because it wasn't Chuck Pagano. Yeah, it was Rex Ryan, I believe. I'm pretty sure it was Rex Ryan. And, boy, Rex Ryan, he brought it, man. He brought it. Like, that. It, it, that's exactly what it was because – Something that's chaos is crazy. It's just crazy, but organized chaos. So this is manipulated insanity. That's probably the best way that I can put it. The defense was manipulated insanity. And, I mean, a lot of times this season, that's what this Baltimore Ravens defense was. That's why it hurt so bad that they just they didn't finish the job. Um, but with Zach Orr, we'll see how it ends up going because uh, I know there's a uh, very big, big shoes to fill, um, big shoes to follow with Mike McDonald. But now Zach Orr has an opportunity to do his own thing. Not to say he'll change up everything, but he got the opportunity to really put his stamp uh, on the defense and on the team. And I know a lot of people are talking about Zach Orr could be the could possibly be the next Baltimore Ravens head coach, but. We'll see how it goes because, again, that's that's John Harbaugh's job. He has it on lock. Uh, he is not getting fired anytime soon. I honestly don't think John Harbaugh will ever get fired, ever. Um, I think the only way, and I've said this for years, but I think the only way that John Harbaugh is going um, is if he decides to step down. Uh, and I know there have been some people that say, oh, well, if the Ravens don't do good this year, then oh, they, they might get rid of John Harbaugh. I just, I, I don't see it at all. But again, it's one of those things that we won't know till we know. Um, speaking about the staff, uh, with Zach Orr, of course, is a new defensive coordinator. The Baltimore Ravens, they also have a new assistant, defense assistant and DB's coach. Uh, and his name is Doug Mallory. Uh, they are hiring Doug Mallory as a defensive backs coach. Now, again, this is, once it, once you in the Hubball family, you are good. You are set. Again, just don't burn no bridges, and you will be set for life. You will always have a job. You will always have an opportunity. Uh, it says he worked under Jim Harbaugh in Michigan, and now he'll work under John Harbaugh in Baltimore. So before Michigan, he worked for teams like the Atlanta Falcons and LSU. So he got some professional and collegiate experience. Well, both are professionals. But, um, yeah, so shout out to them Harbaugh's. Well, the hashtag Hood Harbaugh because they always look out for their people. Uh, Jeff Zriebeck chimed in. He said, the Ravens-Michigan connection continues. Mallory was also with the Atlanta Falcons from 2015 to 2020 as a defense assistant and DB's coach. Mallory also coached the DB's at the University of Maryland from 1997 to 2000. So, nice, familiar face. Well, familiar place. Not familiar face, but, oh, familiar face, too, because he was with the other hardball. But he's also in a familiar place since he used to work in Maryland before. Uh, Jeff Rebick also mentioned how Harbaugh um, has some more work to do. He got some more coaching spots to fill. Said he needs a defensive line coach to replace Anthony Weaver. Uh, he needs an inside linebacker coach to replace Zach Orr. He'll need an assistant O-line coach to replace Mike Devlin, who went to the Chargers. And Mike Devlin is the guy who looked just like Greg Roman, who was in the booth. Whenever they would show Tom Monkey, you would see this Greg Roman look like in the background this year. And everybody was wondering, like, who that is? 
and that was Mike Devlin. Um, and it sounds like uh, uh, an assistant special teams coach, uh, T.J. Weist, won't be back either. So Ravens, of course, losing a lot of coaches, as we got kindly reminded of uh, over the past uh, couple of weeks. Now, um, something that we've been getting a lot of reminders of uh, over this past week and a half, because it has been, whew, been tough. And we are still not over it. And it's one of those things that you just never be able to get over. Um, you, of course, hope that the Ravens, to sort of avenge the loss, uh, that they can continue their 12-year streak. Because every 12 years is when they win the Super Bowl. They won it in the 2000 season, in the 2012 season, and now 12 years later. Hopefully they can get it done in the 2024 season. Uh, so we'll see how that goes down. But in the AFC Championship game. Uh, we know that that game, some funny business going on with that game, but um, a stat came out today that was like, hmm, okay. And this came from Seth Walters. It said, when the Chiefs had six or fewer defenders in the box, the Ravens ran 33 dropbacks, including three scrambles, one QB designed run, and one running back carry. So that was, again, when the Chiefs had six or fewer defenders in the box. So six or fewer, you would think that that's, hey, you could run all day on that. But the Ravens, they said no. So whether that was a mix of Munkin, a mix on Lamar for checking out of stuff, a mix on Harbaugh for not checking people, um, it was just a complete failure by the Baltimore Ravens on so many different levels. And it was just embarrassing. Very embarrassing. I know that somebody put a question in, um, I think, on Twitter, and they were like, would you rather the Ravens have lost in the AFC Championship or lost in the Super Bowl? And that's a really good question. That's a really good question. Um, and it's like, obviously, both are lose-lose. And it just reminds me of the Ray Lewis speech from after the 2011 season when the Baltimore Ravens should have won and should have went to the Super Bowl. After beating the Patriots, but, of course, the Billy Cundiff miss. And then the Lee Evans guy, he got the ball stripped out because it was not a drop. He got it stripped out. But anyway, another conversation for another day. But um, with Ray Lewis, that speech, he said, uh, keep your head up high. Don't, 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 don't hold your head down um, because somebody's going to feel like this later tonight. And somebody's going to feel like this uh, in two weeks, and meaning that. The part that they lost in the AFC Championship, but somebody gonna lose the Super Bowl and they gonna end up feeling even worse because they made it all the way and then they failed. So it's it's a really really tough question though, but something that I was thinking about uh, when they put that. Um, and and the last news of the day, the Hall of Fame is a big achievement. Uh, it's a huge honor because you are considered uh, being one of the best of the best at your position for a good amount of time. Not you're not a one hit wonder, not even a two year wonder. You don't go on any insanity runs, anything like that. But you have consistency year after year after year after year after year after year, and you're considered one of the best among your peers. And former Baltimore Raven, even though it was for a short time, uh, Devin Hester. Uh, he is expected to get announced to the Hall of Fame uh, on Thursday. So that's that, that's really cool for Devin Hester. Obviously, he was only with the Ravens for like a tiny amount of time. Uh, then they cut him, and then he went to the Seahawks. Had a nice little return, nice little punt return for them in the playoffs that year. Uh, but, yeah, then, then that was that. So shout out to uh, Devin Hester. I was really hoping that that was going to work when the Baltimore Ravens signed Devin Hester. I was like, oh, yeah, that's Devin Hester. Hopefully he still got it, but... It just, it, 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 yeah, it wasn't pretty. Um, but again, maybe it was the Baltimore Ravens. Because again, he got that nice return with the Seattle Seahawks. You ain't really gonna know what it is, but it is what it is. So shout out to Devin Hester, though. Uh, I guess he could be like an honorary Baltimore Raven since uh, he came from the U2. So, you know, all the Florida Ravens, Ray Lewis, every young. Um, anyway, uh, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank y'all for everything that you do. Special shout out to the Team Keep It Clean patrons. 
Uh, I ain't forget about questions from subscribers. They coming real, real, real soon. So y'all be on the lookout for that. Uh, if you want to become a team, keep it clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. Uh, and if you don't want to, that's perfectly fine as well. I'm always still have love for y'all regardless. Special shout out to all the team, keep it clean channel members as well. If you want to know who a channel member is, just look in the comment section and you will see their name. It'll be a star, a nice, pretty colorful star next to their name in the comments. So special shout out to all of y'all as well. Uh, I love y'all. I, I thank you for supporting the way that you do. I thank you for always being positive. Uh, and I thank you for just everything. Uh, y'all are crazy, but y'all are good crazy. Y'all positive crazy. And I love y'all crazy. We out.